I'm Nate Eaton and joining me today is Frank Montoya. He worked for the FBI nearly 30 years. He retired in September as the special agent in charge of the Seattle field office. He now lives in Logan, Utah. Mr. Montoya, thank you for being here today. When this news broke on Friday that the FBI was looking at more emails from Hillary Clinton, what was your response as a former agent? It was uh Typical James Comey. This is a situation where he had told Congress at the, at the, in July that if any information, additional information were to become available, that he would uh, let them know. And this is one of those situations where he was living up to his word. You know, a, a real quick point on that. He understands the political nature of the world that we live in or that I lived in. Uh, when it comes to these kinds of investigations. But we're talking about a man of the utmost integrity, the highest honor, and, and, and frankly, who is incorruptible. He's doing what he believes is right. And it's not to protect Jim, Jim Comey. It's about doing what is right. Well, speaking of Jim Comey, there's been a few stories that there has been some internal fighting within the FBI. Some people saying that he should not have announced this on Friday. Other people saying he should have. What are you hearing from your counterparts in the agency? Unequivocally, there is no revolt, as the Republican nominee has stated several times since the news came out on Friday. Any internal revolt within the FBI over whether there were charges or no charges, whether this information should have been released or not released. Keep in mind that there are about 30,000 employees in the FBI. About 12 or 13,000 are agents spread across 56 field offices around the country and in various places around the world. It, frankly, in terms of priorities, we're much more concerned about what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, on our criminal investigations or national security investigations around the country. The discussions about internal strife over whether she was charged or not charged, over whether he should have put out this information on Friday or not, those occur in, in the natural progression of discussion over you know, next actions, what we're supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to be doing it. But in the end, everybody agrees, all right, this is the right thing, let's move forward. So it sounds like you're saying there weren't any political motivations for Comey to do this 11 days before the election. Absolutely none. Uh, when, when I was an SAC, uh, we would meet with him uh, once a week. And you know, it was interesting in discussions about this particular investigation, he protected the integrity of the investigation every day. There, you know, there was not a lot of disclosures to people who were not directly involved in the investigation. Like there were none that I can think of, uh, but at the end, when the decision was made, he sat down with us on a couple of occasions and explained very specifically what his thought processes were. The one thing that he stressed continually was that this was apolitical, that this was about the rule of law, it was about being objective, it was about being neutral, it was about being independent, because that's the only way we can do our job, especially in these kinds of events. Frank, Mrs. Clinton has called on the FBI to release all of the information they have, all of the emails, all of the documents, as soon as possible. Do you think that will actually happen within the next few days? Not likely, because it's still part of the investigation. I mean, it's possible that these are duplicate emails. It's possible that they have a very tangential connection to what has already been discovered. It could become significant, but at the same time, that's going to be part of the investigation, and that will be something that, that is uh, performed the way that we typically perform these investigations. How long could the investigation take? A lot of that will depend on how much information there is. I've, I've seen the numbers um, you know, in the media, 650,000, I think, was one of the numbers that was out there in terms of the, the, the data that's available. You know, Part of this challenge is that the information was uh, discovered, if you will, in the course of another investigation, uh, completely separate and distinct. And so now they have to proceed through a you know, proper legal process in order to get access to the data and then be able to determine what exactly is pertinent to the Clinton email investigation as opposed to what was pertinent to the, the other investigation. Frank, as you've been following this story over the past few months, what would you say is the biggest misconception about everything that has been reported and what does the public need to know that we might not at this point? Well, the thing that boils my blood the most, and yeah, I'm very partisan about this because I just spent 26 years of my life in the organization, are any, any 
insinuations or direct statements that the FBI is corrupt, that it is that Jim Comey is covering his rear end because of the, the, you know, the disclosures that he's made to Congress or the, in, in for the, the notifications he's provided to, for, to Congress. The fact that the investigation wasn't conducted in the most uh, effective manner, in the most thorough manner possible. And some of this criticism comes from former FBI guys, which really frustrates me to no end because, one, they weren't part of the investigation, and two, every step was taken to resolve this thing in the fairest manner possible. Some very strong legal minds made a decision that there wasn't enough evidence to proceed. And having been a part of some of those conversations, I can say unequivocally that, that was, the right decisions were made in the instance of this investigation. All right, well, we will have to leave it there today. Mr. Frank Montoya, a former FBI agent and supervisor, he retired just two months ago as the special agent in charge of the Seattle field office. Mr. Montoya, thank you for joining us today.